Hey guys, welcome back and a happy new year. If you're watching this video, you want a new you. You are resolved to have a better year than 2020, but the truth is 95% of us give up our New Year's resolutions by January 15th. So if you're making a New Year's resolution today, like you want to lose 50 pounds or you want to get your house organized, 95% of people completely abandon this two weeks later but that is not going to be you. I know for the longest time, I didn't make New Year's resolutions because I never stuck with it and it felt like I was setting myself up for failure. But the thing I was doing wrong was really focusing too much on the end goal. So I want to encourage you in this video and show you how you can make small micro changes, how you can introduce little effortless habits that will add up to the huge dramatic change that you're looking for. The first thing I want you to focus on is the fact that progress equals happiness. So it isn't about like the end goal because that's really long in the future, but taking the time to focus on each progress that we make and finding joy in that, in the journey, is what's really gonna keep you motivated. It's the momentum that's gonna keep you going. So that's just a small change in your mindset of like, okay, I wanna lose 50 pounds, but I'm not gonna like focus on the weight. Instead, you're making a shift to, I'm gonna be a healthy person. And every day you choose a salad over a burger, you're gonna celebrate that joy when you're gonna celebrate that progress with happiness. So that is one thing that everyone, the Atomic Habits, Tony Robbins, everyone that I read who's like an expert in being amazing, they say the same thing. It's not focusing on the end goal, but instead focusing on the person we want to be when we achieve that end goal. So if you want to have your whole house organized, what you really want isn't that end goal you want to be an organized person. So your resolution isn't to organize your house, it's to be a more organized person. First of all, that's way more attainable, right? Every day you can be a more organized person. You can do little tiny changes that will help you be a more organized person. Maybe you're gonna write a to-do list every morning. Maybe some days you don't and you do some other way, but we're focusing on the progress. We're not focusing on that end result. And that's what really drives the big changes in our lives. The same if your goal is losing weight, again, 50 pounds or 20 pounds even, that's a huge monumental goal. Instead, we're gonna have a resolution to be a healthier person, which means we're saying this to ourselves, it's so much easier than like, I'm gonna lose weight. It's okay, I'm going to pair a protein with every carb that I have because that's what healthy people do. So if I am gonna have chips, I'm also gonna pair it with something like a couple slices of turkey and I'm gonna have that protein with the chips. I know it doesn't necessarily go together, but that's what a healthy person would do. It's not about drastic things. It's not about giving up the stuff we love. It's not about changing you as a person at all. It's about making small micro habit changes and focusing instead of the end goal of the person we want to be when we achieve that goal. It's like magic, my friends. When you really want to stay motivated to make a change, the great Tony Robbins says you need a pull rather than a push. So saying to yourself, I want to declutter my whole house or I have to declutter my whole house, that's a push, right? That's like a, that's like, ooh, it's a chore. It's something I have to do and nobody likes to be pushed around. A pull is just changing your phrasing, changing the actual words to, I want to simplify my life or I'm going to lead a simpler life. Right? That's, a, that's something that you're excited about. That's a pull. That's a vision that you have for yourself that you're really excited about. I'm going to simplify. I'm going to be a simpler person. Um, and that's why it works. And that's the difference between somebody saying like, I have to get rid of all my stuff that's a push to I'm going to embrace minimalism or I'm going to I'm going to really make my life easier by simplifying my belongings that's a pull 
That feels good to say, I'm gonna get rid of all my stuff or declutter my stuff. That feels bad to say. So when you're coming up with whatever amazing change that you're gonna do for this year, I want you to remember the difference between the push and the pull. I wanna lose 50 pounds, that's a push. That sounds horrible. That sounds like work, nobody wants that. I want to be a healthy person. I'm going to live a healthier lifestyle. That's a that's a pull. That sounds like I'm excited for that. That's something I want to do and want to be. And that simple shift in our mindset and the way we present the words that we want to change, the thing, the ways that we want to change our life, the way that we word it has such an impact on our results. So I'm hoping you guys are feeling inspired and motivated to really make a resolution this year. Be resolved to make small changes towards that vision that you have for yourself in 2021. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. I wanted to take a second to remind you about the new course, Take Your House Back, where I got together with Dana from A Slob Comes Clean and Dawn from The Minimal Mom to show you how to take your house back. Not only how to declutter and simplify, tips to organize, but really how to do less, how to be content with what you have and how to find those shortcuts so that you don't have to work really hard to have the house that you deserve. This is the best gift that you can give yourself, a clean, tidy, simplified home for the new year. Hey guys, thanks so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. I thought I would do a weight loss surgery update for you guys because I feel like the new year kind of goes along with it. A lot of you guys ask me all the time about my weight loss surgery, how it's going, the good, the bad, the ugly. So I thought I would share all of those lovely details with you. I started out um, my journey, the biggest I was, was 245 pounds. The day of my surgery, which was October 22nd, 2019, I was 222 pounds and I lost, I, so I had lost uh, 20 pounds or so leading up to the surgery and then I lost 80 pounds more in six months. So I lost 100 pounds total in six months from the gastric bypass surgery. I had the full Rue and Y where they, they reorganize your guts and they bypass your Dewey denim and, and part of your intestine and they make a little tiny pouch. It was so extreme and looking back, I'm like, what was I thinking doing such an insanely extreme surgery? But here's the honest truth. I never would have lost the weight without it. I just know that. I know that because I tried for 15 years and I failed. And I kept beating myself up because I felt like every other area of my life I had under control, but I could not get this. I couldn't get it and it wasn't from lack of knowledge. I am actually a certified personal trainer in my youth, in my 20s. I worked at a gym, I taught an ab class, I taught yoga class, um, I, I was a personal trainer. So I know how to work out. I know um, about nutrition. I know what I'm supposed to eat. Knowing and doing are two very different things. And I think a lot of people assume when they look at someone who's overweight that they're lazy, they're stupid, or they're uneducated, that they just don't know. Don't you know you should eat some salad? Don't eat burgers and fries, like duh. It's not that we don't know that, okay? There's a difference, there's a difference. And for me, I'm a very impulsive person and it was always like, oh, I'll just have this small little bit, I'll treat myself to this and tomorrow I'll do better. But tomorrow never came. And it wasn't like huge mass quantities binging for me, it was a little snack here, a little snack there. Oh, I'm getting a coffee, I'll just grab a donut while I'm at the coffee shop at the same time. Or the next day I'll get like some sugary Starbucks amazingness or I'm at the grocery store checking out, I'll just grab myself a chocolate bar on the way home. And it was small little things like that that added up to a really big weight gain. And every time I tried to diet or exercise, it felt like a punishment. And so I didn't stick with it because it was a push, right? I was pushing myself and it wasn't a pull. And it wasn't until I finally just resolved to the fact that I needed help and I asked for help and big help. I needed a tool 
to really make a change and my doctor suggested the weight loss surgery and it was a really long, it was like over a year long process with meeting with doctors and nutritionists and psychiatrists um, till you can actually finally get approval for the surgery and it is drastic. It is so drastic and the first eight months was I was sick, I didn't feel good, my energy level, my hair is falling out in clumps, my hair is still so thin, my skin is still very hangy but it was really hangy and then I had gallbladder got infected from gallstones and I was very very ill and so that whole time I'm like I what have I done? I regret this so much, I would rather be big and and yeah now that all that's done I had my gallbladder removed I'm feeling really good, I'm feeling really really good and, and so now I've sort of changed my tune a little bit and I'm like, I'm, I'm happy that I had the surgery, but I don't know the long-term effects that it's gonna have on my body and that's the truth. I don't know the long-term effects of have, absorbing less nutrients, less minerals, less calcium, less vitamins. Um, I don't know what that's gonna do to my body in the long-term. So would I recommend this surgery to a loved one? No, I wouldn't. I have a sister who's overweight, my, my mom's overweight, I have, my dad's overweight. Would I recommend that they have the surgery? No, because I would never want to risk losing them over just losing weight, right? The, risking your life to be thinner is ridiculous, but for some reason it wasn't ridiculous for me. I was, I'm much more willing to risk my own. Ugh, I don't even know. I don't even know how I can justify this, but I'm just really wanting to be honest with you guys. So um, I am happy. I am happy that I had the surgery, but my life has not changed at all. The only thing that's different is it's easier to find clothes because finding plus size clothes is ridiculously hard. <laughs> it is like, please make some nice plus size clothes that don't cost an arm and a leg just anyone, anyone out there, please do that. So that's the only real difference that I've noticed because I don't look in the mirror all the time. And, and when I do, I don't see a change. And the truth is, I didn't see myself as big before. When I was 245 pounds and I looked in the mirror, I just saw Cass. And when I look in the mirror now, I just see the same old Cass. And I think you saw me differently and society saw me as two completely different people and I felt that, right? And that's where it was really the driving force for me wanting to lose weight was the shame I felt for being big. And if I could go back in time, that's the thing I'd really wanna change. I wish I could have accepted myself for the size that I was, but I feel like that's a movement that's coming. And I'm hoping one of the changes that happen in 2021 or in the future is more love and acceptance of people for all body sizes and less shaming of people for their body size. And that's a movement I can 100% get behind. So anyways, I thought I would just share this with you. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.